Hello? Oh, sh- <laughs> night and day difference. Night and day difference. <laughs> oh, that's great. Is this better? Oh, yeah. Uh, Try flipping your phone because it's in a uh, portrait. Let's see. There you go. Oh, yeah. There you go. Uh, um, like, okay. I have to <laughs> put something in up again. God damn. Um, okay, one second. I think maybe this big up cards could work. Maybe. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what? Is that did an I effect just, that like, you did? <laughs> I don't know. Did I just reach an achievement or something? What the hell? For a second. I don't know. What the fuck? <laughs> Have you ever seen that before? No, like, I actually haven't. <laughs> like, how do you fucking... Okay, fuck it. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? First for everything, bro. <laughs> Man. I wish, I wish we caught that. Like, uh, <laughs> interview that could have been funny, bro. I did. <laughs> I recorded it as soon as you changed it. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm keeping it. Best way to do it is just straight, it's just straight through it, bro. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. Let me just let me just swallow this last piece of rye bread and then I'm then I'm ready. That's a bet. Gonna be nice to not um, having to, to think about that, like during um, my U.S. tour. Whenever I, I talk to an American, it's not eight hours, like, back. Yeah, bro. I think even even with Rocket being in America, it's like a two-hour difference for both of us. Mm. Oh, my God. It's so weird for me. What the hell? In Denmark, it's so small that even though it takes, like, let's say, I think it's between five to six hours for me where I live, to go to Copenhagen, we still just put it under like like the same time zone, you know? It's, low, it's not like we, I don't know how it works, all that time zone shit, but I mean, at least an hour ahead, I would say, if it takes that long to go from point A to point B, I have to put on my Rugged Man shirt. Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> Might as well, right? Gotta put the merch on, gotta plug the bros. Bro, what the fuck? That shit look icy. <laughs> Hey, no way. Yeah, yeah I saw I'm so the happy about store, this. Man. That shit looks nice. That's a nice print. Yeah. And it's um it's like good it's like it's good quality as well. I can tell it's not I got a Nikki Slime shirt as well. And it's just like the like his name Nikki Slime and it's it's one of those prints where it's just like plastic on top of the of the material. Oh, but this is a part of the material. So yeah, it lasts much longer, I would assume. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the quality after every wash, most likely. Yeah. All right, here we go. First, okay, wait, maybe some lighting. I need some fucking lighting. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we need to do this properly, man. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. Isn't this better? Oh, that's a lot better. That's a lot better. You're yeah. definitely showing out for everybody in Europe, bro. <laughs> man. First guest outside of the U.S., bro, like, long time coming, even though it's only been like a month since these videos have been posting. <laughs> but everybody's been wanting or everybody's just been recommending people from Europe outside of the U.S. and the scene in general. So finally got it to happen. Crossing the pond with Freddy Confetti. This is awesome, bro. <laughs> Go crazy. Let's get it. Let's just, fucking get it. Just the beginning, and we're definitely going to have plenty of more shows on, plenty of interviews for other people. So I'm just glad that you're actually here to do this, bro, even though the time difference is like a, a pain in the ass right now. All right, man. Doing well. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, bro. Okay, so like I said, first guest abroad. It was just off the limb because I knew like you were you're a big supporter of everything that I do. And I really appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Like I always say that to people every time I talk to them, it's like, even if I wasn't getting paid, I still am not getting paid. I do this because I actually love the community. And I always say that. All right. Second, man. That's the right attitude. No matter what, I'll still talk about the genre, whether it's like drama or not. Like I, they got yeah. me through some tough times. That's that's one thing. Most stuff. Mm-hmm. can only agree yeah like the entire pandemic just listening to funk that's it <laughs> <laughs> like we we talked about this like 
while we were setting up like the recent video on instagram circulating from the hamburg show or like little problem and sorry man call it ham fist <laughs> yeah, yeah so what's who tur who showed up because like from the video i saw dj source roland jones nikki rob no sauce surprisingly blunted astronauts teddy yeah and uh sorry man a little problem so how is that experience actually going to i'm guessing it's your first funk show outside of denmark yeah okay it's my first funk show outside of denmark it's actually my first funk show like ever if i have to be totally honest with you because the gigs i've been playing here in denmark that i've been showing on my story and whatever sometimes it isn't per se funk shows it's more just me as a dj playing these gigs and then like including funk tracks in my gig. So I don't think people there went to the show and were like, oh shit, this is gonna be a funk show and we're gonna enjoy and blah, blah. Like, no, I, I think most of them would just be like, if we're going to a party, it's gonna be lady as foggy and it's giddy. Yeah, definitely, man. It's a, Can it's, I swear, by the way? Bro, I, I don't, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> like whatever, whatever you wanna do, like, I don't, I don't, <laughs> i don't i never had a rule or set a rule for that honestly like as long as like okay. it's not like too too bad I'll, I'll definitely cut it out probably didn't see like the last uh interview i did with enoch but yeah curse, curse yeah, like did. no to curse like no tomorrow on there so like it's it's just free form because i definitely want everybody to like have a place to talk in general like if i cut something out then there yeah. kind of is no point in having these interviews in the first place so like the, gotcha. only t the only time like I actually cut something is like if there's a long pause between like yeah. questions and conversation. I actually found you through Odd One Out and that was the collab that you did and it's called Bust a Move with Rocket Man. And ever since yeah. then, I've been like following you almost religiously. Some of my favorite tracks that you actually have are, I think I'm pretty sure SoundCloud exclusive like how has it been collabing with people since basically like I found you in early 2022 because since then you dropped partying since 1994 and after party volume three which I think it was your recent track your recent tape that you just dropped on Spotify yeah after party volume three that's uh that's the latest one okay for sure. okay so how how has it been since dropping since 2022 and like we're, I'm gonna talk about like How's it been since you've been dropping, since you started producing? But how's it been since basically I found you? Uh, it's not been like up uh, to the certain standard as I like the wave I was riding uh, since I started in 2020 up until, yeah, maybe the end of 2022. It hasn't been like from that point on till now, it hasn't been up to that standard at all like when it comes to the labs at least yeah i've been trying to reach out to as many people as possible without like without putting too much on my plate but that seemed to not work out so well because i figured out that i didn't want to you know study whatever i was studying it was called multimedia design i figured out it wasn't for me and in um <clears throat> how do you say in correlation like in in yeah, in correlation to yeah. uh, to doing music as well on the side, just didn't work out. So I had a lot of work suddenly on my plate. Yeah, I had free time because I didn't study anymore, but uh, it was just the stress that got to me. Uh, so I had to work that out. Uh, it took me a long time, and uh, like totally honestly speaking, I don't know if I'm like completely good yet health wise, like my mental health. Um, but it's better than, than since that. It's, it's so much better. I figured that out and I just got back to multiple people and said, hey, this is how I'm feeling. I hope you're okay with it, blah, blah. And they all of them totally understood. So, um, so yeah, I still got some uh, untied ends, you know. Yeah, so plenty of, plenty of work to get done in the future also. So definitely going to keep the book open for that later. Going back to like what you just said when it comes to like, connecting with people and messaging people about it everything like people are pretty open now that i'm realizing because like once people know your name they kind of know your face um it's pretty much it's a lot easier to either connect with somebody collab with somebody or just get to know them and i'm actually i'm actually glad that people are 
pretty open because like I said before, there are plenty of strangers and there's a lot of people that are in the internet genre of funk that people like to call it. But it's re it's real it's a really great thing for people to actually be open to talking and being saying, Okay, it's it's cool. We could definitely get it to work in the future. Yeah. I okay. totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh so I categorize you as sort of like the second wave of producers in the scene. So like Local Stranger, Blue Bear, North Posse, Odd, Lil Rocket Man. Do you think some of the guys along with yourself will be bigger in the coming years or be recognized as people that probably you inspire to be? Example of that can be Kush Cadets, AP, Always Proper, Holy Mob, Purple Posse. Like, do you guys feel that in, in some capacity you guys would be as big as those names themselves i'm trying to be as humble as possible so i won't include myself in this one okay, <laughs> nah. okay seriously speaking um i don't know about myself i try to like be in the moment as much as possible instead of thinking ahead and because i, I found out that's just again it's a strict stress factor for me of course, I got dreams and I got high hopes and so on. Uh, but also, I'm being I'm I'm like a realist. So when it comes to my own music and my own career, where I will be like in a year or five years and so on, I have it written down. But I also try to not think too much about it, you know. But when it comes to other people, Rocket Man, bro, <laughs> workhorse. He is great. Yeah. <laughs> He's great, man. I, I see him everywhere, like lapping with so many people and also the, the latest drops and his singles and like the lap, the, the tape laps as well. Man, yeah, if he just if he just keeps doing what he's doing, he's definitely gonna, I think he's gonna make it to, to not just next level, but like crazy levels in this. Also, Local Stranger. When I heard him the first time, he was, uh, he was telling me, oh, I um I wish I was like uh, it, it would go a little faster with the mixing part of this and uh, it's a bitch to be doing this and that and so on and so forth. But I'm learning, I'm doing and so on. And and I could only relate to him. That's the same. Uh, I definitely think the whole mixing aspect of 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 doing the music is of producing music is is that's definitely the that's that's the hard part because anybody can make a drum loop or something like that right but mm -hmm. making that, that drum loop sound good uh, that's a, that's a whole other beast but yeah those especially those two local stranger and little rugged man if they just continue down the same road they're, they're on right now only the sky's the limit bro like when i was in colorado with rocket like all i saw was like hundreds if not maybe thousands of projects he's worked on and like, mm -hmm. like just in just in like the two three days that i was with i was with him actually like he worked on like 10 or 15 different projects at the same time like there's still stuff to this day that he hasn't dropped and that was like the beginning of last year that we're just seeing publicly so just yeah he's su he's such a workhorse and i'm actually glad that i get to know who he is or so, in some capacity like me him in general because I know in the year, in the next year or two, like he's gonna get his flowers for a fact because he works way too damn hard. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's, su that's such a it's such a great thing and it's such a great personality trait that he has, and he's just he's just laid back all the time. Like he's pretty chill. Like at like in every single conversation that we've had, whether it's face to face or it's over a, a call or something to that capacity. So yeah. I'm gonna just keep yeah, plug, I'm gonna just keep plugging him until like he actually yeah. gets what he deserves for all the fucking work he puts in, man. For sure, man. For sure. Like it's one way way or the other. I'll, I'll excuse me. Either one of his songs like just pops off like crazy, like it goes viral or something like that, right? Or it's just gonna be the the good old like as you say yourself workhorse thing where. Like eventually people are just gonna they can only respect it and they can only like uh like share it with their friends because they they realize that this guy he's 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 here to stay uh and he's doing some good music so we might as well show him all the love that we can and share him with uh, share his music with as many people as we can yeah man he definitely he deserves more. like uh, deserves number one way more like i feel like yeah he, he talked about like collaborating with rappers and everything. I, I hope that mm -hmm. happens and that he actually gets something in the woodwork 
that hopefully that he's either working on or that he can get connected with yeah me too i haven't heard that actually yet but i assume he's gonna tell me at some point <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. for example um we we uh we just talked last night about uh my u.s trip and uh, it's a total green light now um as i told you also earlier uh, these past days um that i'm actually coming over this time it's it was supposed to happen last year but then some bullshit happened and it it didn't go as as planned but but yeah i'm coming over but uh what i was going to say with, um is that i think maybe uh we're gonna chill for longer than i anticipated uh when we started talking about this mm -hmm. and uh it looks like we are gonna spend some a good amount of time together so it would be dope to make lots of music with him just get as much in the bag as possible and uh, then start sending it out to like yeah all the rappers because that's definitely what we need in our community like the phone community we got lots of producers we need some more rappers man yeah speaking of rappers more content creators because there's only oh yeah a there's only a handful i know there's a lot of people um Teddy wants to get more consistent with it. Like I've talked to, I've talked to him before. Um, he's just busy with everything else. Um, when it comes to, I think, ba I think Balamy, and when it comes to getting guests in general, um, and also obviously putting the show on that he's putting on this month in London. Yeah. Um, I hope he becomes consistent with it. Uh, the, I, I wish the best for him. It's not a competition by any means necessary. I get inspiration from him. That's the reason why I sort of did this for this format. First time I heard about him was um the funk was the funk show. Um, and I just listened to it for like hours. Um, just the mix. The conversation is what actually struck me the most because yeah. he was the first person out of everybody to actually have like a one on one with with different people like Cody Valdez, Blue Bear, Ryan mm -hmm. Celsius, and recently back when and um Lil Rocket man. So yeah. if we can get more content also, creators out here. What's yeah, up? for sure. Also like the the like the the, um, the quality that he's bringing like with the sound quality when you're listening and his ability to sound so like he's so professional sounding with this whole radio funk mm -hmm. radio host character. Uh I mean, it's 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 kind of surreal to listen to his funk shows because it's like it sounds way too good to be true. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's so professional. Yeah, bro. He was like, he DM me like his setup, his camera setup, his interface, his audio, and I'm like, bro, I just literally just use a, a Logitech webcam and a microphone and i mean it's it's good like i could put out some decent yeah. quality but when it comes to him it's like a it's another level um yeah it gets it, the job done yeah it's definitely like what's the word different workflows for everybody i would say and his is yeah. a lot is a lot more professional than what i want to get to in the future this isn't a question but how did you actually come with uh your producer tag like pop off like well how did that how did that origin oh. story start because like I didn't think of I didn't think of it, but now that I think about it, like when I hear when I hear you, a beat that you're on or something that you made, I always hear Freddy Confetti pop off. So how did that how did that actually happen? Yeah. So uh, thank you for asking. By the way, I love telling this story. <laughs> okay, okay. So I think it's back in I believe it's back in like 2000. Yeah, it's 2015, and um, I'm at uh, the biggest festival in Denmark called Roskilde Festival and I'm playing a gig um, at this like huge camp uh, stage uh, you know in the camp area I don't know if you can do this in America at the festivals but at Roskilde Festival in Denmark you people they bring like car batteries uh, truck batteries um, like there's even been some somebody they they brought a um, uh, what is it called like a, 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 flight battery like a airplane battery oh, air. um yeah Jeez. because the stage the stage and lights and um what is it called the speakers and, and shit it was it it had to like use up so much uh, battery life i guess it's called right mm -hmm. uh or energy um and they didn't want to bother going like uh go with car batteries back and forth to uh, to have them uh, like charged up um that's also something you can you can do like on the festival side 
obviously yeah. you pay for it but they just wanted to bring the battery and then like have it like run for the whole week and it easily could so they even brought that okay sorry uh so back to the main thing so i'm playing at this uh camp stage uh, it's not official from Ruskill the festival but it's these guys they make their own like camp stage uh like with a l u k uh short for for their name their name was for the camp was camp luxus which is camp luxurious uh in english um so they uh they had these three letters as the stage and i'm in the middle of the of the u you know um so i'm in the middle there and uh, to the left of me, right for you guys, probably, uh, is my um, one of my best friends that I also make music with. And uh, on my right side is my brother sitting on top of the of the U, you know. And um, like out of nowhere, uh, they at one of the drops when I'm playing the gig, uh, I that there's a rise up and then there's a drop and then people go crazy. But at the drop. They apparently had two confetti, uh, what is it called? Confetti... Um... Like a cannon? Like a confetti cannon? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. They had one each and they they popped them on the drop. And, uh, and then I thought to myself, oh, that was great. That was awesome. And then I come home from the gig and I'm like, I gotta use this somehow. I gotta use this. And then I remembered my brother. He said, oh, that was crazy confetti like as him as he told me as an i'm confetti but then i ask him what do you mean my name is not confetti i'm your brother you already know what <laughs> like what's going on i'm i'm fred no 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 i mean the confetti blah blah but it was too late my mind already like started uh, working there and then i thought to myself like well my name is freddy and he he just called me confetti or i thought so right so put those together freddy confetti Boom. And there we go. That was how I came up with the name. And just pop off. <laughs> just pop yeah, off. Yeah, and then just pop off. Bro. <laughs> because when it pops off from the, when you make it pop off, it's a party and there's a woo. You know, everybody's <laughs> going crazy. That's, that's actually really, that's actually really funny. I feel like that's what everybody, when it comes to like, it just randomly happens when it comes to names, I guess. Yeah. Publicly on both Instagram, Spotify, SoundCloud, your first drop. I might get this I might get this right. I don't know, but this is just public public for me. It's coming down nearly three years ago. And I I, I put it in this I put it in like brackets, Homer Simpson floating on a cloud in an angel outfit. That's the cover art on SoundCloud. Um mm. what has changed about your production style since that first actual drop on SoundCloud? I think uh like the changes of my style and music from then to now that's a kind of tough one because i've always like thought of myself as a producer where i don't have a distinctive sound like it uh, but at the same time people tell me oh I, I can already hear that's a confetti song without hearing the 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 tag uh and i think that has something to do with my mix downs when it comes to just like music style i'm not sure i'm i'm, I'm not sure what to tell you honestly because I try to bring myself out of the comfort zone as much as possible. I try to I try to build up songs differently every time, also with a different kind of arrangement, different sounds. Like I just challenge myself each time instead of having a cutie cutter uh, project. Um, um, not talking down or anything to anybody here, but some of you guys, it's very obvious that you're using the same goddamn project. Stop doing that, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man um yeah so i'm just trying to challenge myself i'm trying to to not be like comfortable uh in the set like project because i've also noticed that that also that is especially that is exactly excuse me that is exactly like how i reach these new types of uh how can you say levels i guess mm -hmm. um if i didn't try out different styles of music uh, first of all it was jason rich for many uh, as well 
Um, and then I tried to make some more like Roland Jones type style music and, and uh, Barry Main as well. And uh, and then it went over to more like, um, how can you say, um, I don't know what it's called, but I call it cloud funk. It's that whole riff, for example, riffs, styles, uh, style of funk is like very cloud nine, very, a lot of reverb and, you know, all that. Uh, and now I'm just... I don't know. Now uh, I think I'm just trying to make myself not make any music because that's what I really need. So when I come back, hopefully I figure out an, a new style. And yeah, I think I'm just gonna stick with that, uh, stick to that style uh, for some time. Then I'm I'm also like uh, typing some more question, more question to ask, more questions to ask you about that too. But one I already I already had, and you already mentioned Jason Rich. Um, He's on Welcome to the Party, the EP. Two of your biggest songs are on there. How did you actually lock in, um, to my knowledge, like that collab um, along with all your other collabs in general? Because I know, right, I probably wrote it down, but on Parting Since 1994, you had eight collabs. And after Party, the first, I think volume three, you had basically half of it consisted of collabs. So how did you did you like how did you handpick each and every single collab along with linking up with people because for your entire discography a majority of them are collabs i would say a little less than 50 percent and it's it, it's similar to like how rocket man collabs with a bunch of artists so how do you actually find that person how do you hand select them and what's the entire process when it comes to collaborating with other artists or the producers yeah so what i do usually uh i just I I discover them by uh, like chance or accident or whatever you call it, um, just from browsing uh, SoundCloud and then, you know, uh, let's say that I'm distracted by my phone and then the song that I was initially listening to, it jumps to like the suggested area or whatever you call it, right? Uh, and 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 then I hear something and then I'm like, oh, that sounds great. Who is that? For example, yesterday I found this guy called something with love, <laughs> like L U V V, with some kind, some song. He, he made this song called PlayStation. I was like, I need to find this guy. I need to hit him up. I want to work with this guy. Uh, fortunately, I couldn't find his his IG or like his uh, X slash Twitter account or anything. It, it was only Spotify and um and apple music and and youtube and uh, the youtube channel it wasn't like his per se it was the distributor youtube oh like uh, how distro yeah. kid drops music like that okay. exactly yeah so um but i hope i can figure it out but yeah so when i found some find somebody i uh i just start out being uh, like very personal with them and and writing like introducing myself and and like typing with sincerity and i don't like i don't i don't just you know type lap and question mark or like i don't keep it short because i don't feel like that's i feel like it, again it's like when i receive those dms i kind of feel like do you even mean it like mm -hmm. or you just see my numbers and then you want to cut up the cake or something like that is actually that's what i feel like because why don't you take the time to you know figure out who you are me? exactly like it, it just seems like you went copy paste and then insert you know or uh, like and then so so i i am um, i just try and keep it like very very personal tell them a bit about myself and like which genres i produce in uh, which songs of theirs that i found and also which ones are my favorites to butter them up a bit and uh <laughs> and uh yeah because who doesn't like a nice compliment right yeah that's, that's the true. thing so yeah I, I guess there's a bit of a business aspect to it uh with the compliments but uh, just know i i mean it it's not just because i want to work with people i actually mean what i say i'm a very literal guy so and then I just, you know, wait for a response. And most of the times I get a response and it's a positive response. And they just ask me, either send me a project or can I send you some or whatever. And then it just goes off like that. Yeah, man. Um, talk about being genuine. That's so, <laughs> like, 
okay I, i'm gonna just say this like that's a reason why i don't collab with a lot of people because you only know my name like it's it's different if i ask somebody hey can you come on a video or like can you help me out with something because it's something that they don't they're not familiar with i would say versus like it's a one-off song maybe it'll get like thousands of plays but at the end of the day like no one's gonna remember that unless it's a really really good song um that people put out so i mean being genuine and just me just me being honest that's sort of like why i don't ask a, a lot of people to collab with because i know i can get a lot better like I, I would say i'm pretty decent right now that's just me being humble but when it comes to producer me versus making videos it's two different people two two completely different people like i'd rather collab with somebody that it's their first video or like it's their first interview like like you said earlier like that's something that both of us are going to remember and it's something that we can see each other's face people can go back to it and people can learn about both me as long as the person that i'm talking to so it's a lot more personal yeah. on that end and that's also a reason why i sort of came up with these videos in general because yeah firstly there's not there's one other person that does this format in the actual community and then making videos there's only like two or three people off the top of my head that that are doing it consistently like yeah you have a one-off video but besides like the zap beats tutorials um from like years ago vaughn dropping videos <laughs> and shinzo dropping tutorials there's not that many people actually promoting videos in the actual vi in the actual community yeah. so I saw, uh, what is his name, 127, he asked his commu uh, his fans, um, followers, listeners, whatever you call them, on his story, if we wanted to uh, see him make a return to the YouTube uh, tutorials. I was instantly, yes. Because uh, I don't know if like it's, it's like common knowledge uh, to this whole like producer thing, but or is, if it's common knowledge to producers, for producers, what I'm talking about is the fact that, at least for me, I learn so much quicker and faster and remember as well what I've learned if I watch the tutorials. Mm -hmm. um, if I only make music and 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 only listen to my own beats and, and then, you know, chill time, listen to other music and so on and so forth, it only gets me so far. But I've noticed that watching either the same tutorials like to really get it right whatever i want to accomplish or just new videos like searching for them and watching them it can even be like full length like over an hour uh and yeah it, it, it can take a lot of time like and it can also be like oh shit, that's a lot of a lot of knowledge at the same time right yeah. holy shit! but still like just watch it. Like grab a cup of coffee, uh, smoke a ciggy, smoke a stogie, uh, something. Go, just do something and kick back and watch it. And just don't take it too serious, if you know what I mean. Like not, don't be like, oh, I gotta learn, I gotta learn this, I gotta remember, blah blah blah. blah. No, no, no. Just do it like you were watching a movie because it's it's gonna stick. Either the first time it's gonna stick or the second time. Maybe not the one hour videos, obviously. But those 10 minutes videos, just watch them one or two times. You're going to, yeah, and then open FL or Ableton or whatever you work in. I promise you, you're going to be like, wow, I learned something today. <laughs> yeah. It's a really nice tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like going back to that, bro, I found, I think it was 127, like his tutorial on how to uh, make funk. It was either the studio video or the the Barry main video and that's sort of like how like who i emulated at the time um even though my beats were in my mixing was fucking garbage <laughs> at the time definitely got better in like the last year or two that's who i emulated like Barry main is still like my top artist or like the top person that i listen to on spotify to this day and i've been listening to him for three years at this point funk i've been listening to like five or six years but he's basically top every like this year it only changed to roland jones just because you know he drops more more tapes with other people and collaborates collabs with a lot more people but barry mm -hmm. main has still been top five top two even top top person on that list for, for me yeah he's um, definitely like he's up there man he's so good yeah he's, he's he sounds so natural is i don't know how to either like explain it other in other way but his mixes are so natural and transparent but still like 
feels full. I don't know how to explain this, man. It just sounds like it just sounds like uh, nature, kind of. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, under I understand. Like, not a lot going on, but at the same time, you can hear each and every single piece that he puts into his project. Yeah. All right. So, how did you find funk? Because this is a this is a question I added, Lynn. This is sort of another question that a lot of people can relate to and it, it can be really deep or it can be as simple as i found jason rich he produced for baby no money young gravy and then rabbit hole mm. after that yeah i've i've noticed that a lot of people they say dj young vamp um and uh and then blessings uh, as the first track from is it like traveling in japan number two or three or something mm -hmm. uh from ryan celsius obviously but for me, um, yeah, this is about to get deep, bro. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, let's get it. So I'm sitting, uh, I'm sitting on my kitchen floor. At the time, I'm living alone, and it's 2015, I think. 16. I think it's 2000. I, it's either 15 or 16. I can't. I can never remember. It's one or the other. And uh, I'm sitting on my kitchen floor. I'm, uh, I'm sad as fuck because I was laid off. Uh, very like. Uh, what is it called? Not very. Um, uh, I felt like I was pushed out um, instead of, you know, me fucking up, <laughs> actually. Uh, and at the time, I was still like a, a young gun. So, like a really young, young guy, at least in here. Um, so, at the time, I, I just felt like I didn't know what to do. So I just agreed with the terms. And uh, and then I went home, sat on my kitchen floor and uh, smoked a ziggy and uh, and listened to some music. And out of like, I'm, I'm just uh, listening to uh, listening to music on my PC and then scrolling through, I think, maybe Instagram or something. I'm looking at my phone at least. And uh, my food is in the oven, and suddenly, uh, Young Vamp's uh, song with Godfather starts playing from Rare Funk's YouTube channel. And when the music starts, I'm instantly like, what is this? What the fuck is this? I thought it was like a movie or like a, a weird like uh, ad I was about to, to uh, listen to. But no, I, I go to my PC and I see Rare Funk, DJ Young Vamp, Godfather, and then this crazy cover where everything, like you're inside a mansion and everything is just gold. Oh yeah, <laughs> I know a video you're talking about now, man. Yeah, so I listen and I listen and and then it just goes off, uh, like it drops with the drums and, and then the future the starts rapping and i'm like okay it was already really good and then future starts rapping and i'm like how the how, how is this what how can you do that how can you like pull the you know the acapella from like the official release and then putting it what i gotta figure out what this is what is this and then i just start researching and researching and try to like produce it myself it's really hard until i figure out who set beats is so uh, I can uh, I can throw a lot of my uh, a lot of credit to uh, the set beats. Like if he didn't put out his videos, I probably wouldn't be sitting here with you right now. So big shout out to set beats, man. Also, I gotta say it. I'm not gonna be happy about it, but kind of shout out to DJ Young Bam too. Yeah, like, we like, already we <laughs> like yeah, we, we know we, what we we know we we already know we already know, bro. <laughs> like like. I got like every like the last three people I talked to, um, I I brought up the two year, um, and it was the people it was Pon, it was Pon Suda and like his crew from Texas, and it was also Rocket Man as well. Um, we talked about the two year anniversary, basically how it ha like not how it happened because everybody knows because of like what, the video that got posted, but like the after the after wave of like how uh, like what the entire crew did and like it was it was great on their end like the venue almost nearly sold out um yeah. minus the actual news that actually happened but they had to like categorize like not uh, not categorize but have a different section when it comes to like his music and what he's done with the community versus like the actual mm -hmm. person it's similar to like yeah. how people like Kanye and how people hate Kanye or like 
Playboy Cardi or like different person. Music is great. Personality needs it needs to be two separate entities in yeah. its own. Like he's a great he's a great producer. He's helped the genre yes. a lot. A lot of people will still drop his name. It doesn't matter where you found the genre. Like people know who DJ Young Vamp is because he is and still is a top producer in our genre yeah. like that's that's inevitable as a person you got to separate that at the end of the day because it could Most be different definitely. it could be different in person versus online as a lot of people know each other honestly speaking i haven't met a lot of people that doesn't make music that agrees to that like for example my own family i told them about young vamp not about the situation but I told them about Young Vamp and I showed pictures of him and so on and so forth. And uh, my brother, he was he 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 knows who he is and he knows about the phone culture as well. Um, but they were instantly like, "We don't want to listen to his music." And my brother was like, "I don't want to listen to his music anymore because of these things." Mm -hmm. And I, I I told them I kind of understand, but at the same time, you have to separate the artist. From the private person like the, the art from who is making the art because it's it, it's not the same thing at all like it yeah. just isn't uh and they didn't they didn't understand uh, when i said that they couldn't like like what of course it is he makes it therefore i'm supporting him. yeah but it's not it's not really what it is about it's just solely you looking and listening to just the art and then whatever is going on in the private section. It's, it's like your job doesn't really give a shit about what you do in your free time. You know, it's yeah. kind of the same thing here. I just feel like it's uh, it's a bit more serious. You have to set up separators. That's um, that's also my opinion. Yeah, like Enocalypse, he, talk, he talked about it. Like he didn't, he tried as hard as he possibly could to not name drop him in that interview. But obviously we all yeah. knew who he was talking about. Um, but this yeah. was like, I recorded that like five, like the week after the funk show and maybe even four or five days after that and just like every ten, like tensions were high like they were trying to i don't know if they were checking up on him or not but like his name in bad faith was still talked about so yeah like it was really difficult because it was a shaky it's a shaky situation um just to talk about it because me personally i i hope he gets better or like whatever situation yeah. he's in like i i wish nothing like i I'll, I'll still like bump his music as a person i have to separate that but as a as a as a person completely different two people completely different situation i just wish him to get better yeah me too i can only agree to that i i don't want anything worse to happen to him even though uh <laughs> but no like i don't i don't want anything bad to happen to him um i just hope he he gets well and like get some lovable, like good, genuine people around him that he trusts and trusts him. And like, like it's just, yeah, I just hope he gets well, actually, in short. Just wish nothing but the best from him um, in the future. Also, going back to personally you and your discography, uh, recently you changed your aesthetic of your cover art. Um, like it was Simpsons to like a lot of people know when it comes to loops and comes to advertising and promoting on rare funk smooth sounds and ryan celsius like people use sort of that aesthetic as a whole but recently you went to sort of like a more sleek newer black and white cover art for your recent solo drops and i think um you were in one of the beat battles and your cover art was actually like the newest cover art that you had i can't remember what the song was actually called um but Banda. Was, yeah banda um so what was the actual uh what was the actual aesthetic change like what what drove that or was it just like out of nowhere um i th it was i think it's uh it's partly out of nowhere but at the same time i just felt like nah, i don't i don't want to i don't want to just like take these already like all these uh covers that people that people have already seen uh i i, I want to at least try and make some creative out of it and also to teach myself how to use canva some more you know the website mm -hmm. amazing website. oh my god uh yeah <laughs> so uh so yeah uh i started using canva and started started like, messing around with 
whatever pictures uh, correlates to uh, or not correlates it like, a, like the vibe of the song yeah exactly uh like the vibe whatever the title is of course as well like obviously you, you need some kind of of badass old guy <laughs> that sits with like a a togi or whatever he's sitting with uh on a cover that is for a song called banda and it's about like gang shit in the mafioso <laughs> like times of 1950s right mm -hmm. um so yeah I, i'm i'm gonna try to like make the cover speak for the song and vice versa as well like it, it's the same thing it's not just a cover oh that looks uh, I, i've seen this before simpsons or whatever and, and then boom it's funk i don't want to do that anymore okay big co okay this is a question that i've been wanting to ask you for a long ass time and this is actually like when you drop uh partying since 1994 off the top of my head a lot of people have done this in the past and there are probably going to be a lot of other people that do this in the past but when it comes to collabs with people that are sort of oriented with drift funk um examples cloudy main apoc juplux roland jones you had roland jones with ghostface obviously ghostface and pharmacists weren't always proper of couple uh, i think a few years ago at this point um juplux and apoc collabing with play of funk himself satori zoom and ghostface so how did your collab with play of funk specifically the song the funk like happen because a lot of people hate drift funk a lot of people love drift funk i'm i'm like in the middle because like for for a fact that it has funk in the name like mm. like I, i'll still listen to it whether it's good or bad i always say there's a skip button if you don't like the shit so <laughs> how did that how did that happen because you are one if not four people that are on his actual uh this not discography but his spotify when it's appeared on He's a featured artist. Yeah. You're one of four people. So how did that actually come about? Man, he's Danish. Yeah, like uh, he's Danish. I, I <laughs> no, not many people knows he's Danish. That's the thing. Uh, like I figured out he was Danish um, because I I listened to one of his uh, like bigger songs. I don't remember. Uh, I think something with North North Memphis. Isn't that him? Uh, that, uh, that's, that's, that's somebody that's else. Pharmacist. I, I don't. Shit. Sorry about that. Hold on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember, man. It's it's like his most popular one. The the one that really really popped off on TikTok like years ago. Yeah, I got you. Uh, let me look it up right mm -hmm. now. Cause I know what song yeah. you're talking about. It's a great title. It's Funky Town. Funky Town. Yeah, Funky Town. Funky yeah, Town. there we go. Uh, yeah. So I I just I um I listened to it uh, again. Um. And and then I uh, and then I I wanted to check him out. Like, what is this guy even about? And I see randomly on his IG story, he's being asked all these questions. And then one one guy or girl, like one one of the questions were, "Where's he from?" And uh, and then he just did just very plain, "I'm Danish." And then sparked an, an idea. So uh, I instantly went to his DM section and uh, told him uh, hey my name is fred i'm also danish i'm doing funk you know the actual funk and <laughs> so, yeah um so i just hit him up and uh, we talked and uh, he's a young gun i don't know how old he is now i think he's like 21 22 23 or something but at the time he was like 19 18 something like that and uh, and then we just went back and forth uh, i even asked him if he was interested in in playing some gigs uh like with me as well on the on the card and then i know some people in denmark and we could set it up but he doesn't seem like the most like how can you say like social person uh i think he just likes to maybe stick a bit to himself and yeah. Uh, he, yeah, he's not very, uh, very out there, you know. So, uh, so yeah. Um, but I, th I think maybe that could happen in the future. Hopefully, it will because he deserves that shit. He really deserves it, man. Uh, to come out and play some gigs. But yeah, so we talked, and uh, I hit him up one day and asked him if he wanted to be on my debut album, and he was instantly like, "Yes, bro. Yes, I would love to." And uh, I asked him for a fee out of respect, like, do you want some bread for it? Is there anything I can do? And he was just like, no, like, just credit me correctly and let me know if there's any issues, then I'll fix it up 
with uh, my distribution company because he's so big that I can't just credit him and then boom, you know, mm -hmm. it had to be, uh, he, he had to be contacted by his own distribution company, I think, uh, and then him giving them the green light that this is, this is true. This is genuine. It's not just some guy trying to, um, it plays off like, of him. Exactly. Okay. Um, so yeah, and, uh, it went through and put out the, the tape and boom, I got a lab with one of the biggest stars in funk. Freaking crazy. <laughs> Freaking crazy, man. My bad. I'm just yeah. I'm just changing the volume real quick. Uh, yeah, because like that was the one thing that I wanted to like ask you, like how that actually <laughs> happened, because like people that watch my videos, I don't know. I don't know. I like I matured over it. Like I'm a, I'm gonna listen to Drift Funk. I'm gonna listen to like whatever is like whatever sounds good. Um, that's just that's just me kind of maturing because at the end of the day like everybody wants to make money off of their music or everybody wants to have people hear their music and like it, it's just it's just inevitable like you're gonna see somebody that's younger at some point because there's a lot of people that are like in their mid-teens making this genre like more yeah. successful like at, like you're gonna see you're gonna see it at some point we definitely have seen it at some point there's a lot of people that are gonna get a lot more credit at the end of the day like as long as it's good music i'm i'm fine by it like i wish nothing but success for everybody i hope everybody wishes the same thing for me like i'm just yeah, i'm just all I'm... about like lifting everybody up i really can't like I, I i say this to everybody i really don't have time for beef when it comes to like different names different anything like i like I, I i have no beef with anybody <laughs> like if you if you want to collab i'm cool like we're doing now yeah. like want to get on a video i'm completely down all i want to see is success from everybody like obviously not a lot of people are making money off of this unless you're like a big name in general but i wish nothing but success whether people make money of, off of it or not or if you just change one person's life with your music like that's all i'm i'm completely down for everything Man, you're taking the words out of my mouth right now, man. It's exactly the same I feel like. Yeah, because like I, I, I'm the same fucking person. <laughs> I'm the same person on camera, off camera when I'm recording. Like my friends get tired of me playing funk <laughs> in my fucking car, bro. Like I'm telling you this right now. That's all I play. My top genre for like four or five years has been funk on Spotify, bro. Like if you see me in person Hold that's on. all i'm gonna fucking talk about because i don't want to talk about my job because it's some bullshit right now <laughs> but like yeah man this is the same with me yeah like going, going back going back to that bro it's like i i only talk about this and that's sort of why i transitioned from doing like tech stuff even though i want to do that for like future videos because a lot of people want to like update their rigs and a cheap a cheap form form at some point so they can actually make more music or better music without fucking fl crashing <laughs> um <laughs> we all, we've yeah. all seen that um, yeah man it's not a pretty sight it's not yeah. a pretty sight yeah it's it's, God a, damn it. it's a terrible thing um but i think it maybe had to happen maybe 500 times to me before i just went break this <laughs> shit i'm gonna buy the bitch now i don't like this man i don't i don't condone this i'm just gonna buy the bitch and, and be done with it oh man best but, choice i ever made man. almost best choice i ever made yeah because i d like future video idea right now for me is to make i'm not gonna make like a new computer or anything but i'm just gonna do like a down to earth like what you need so this doesn't happen like mm. as, like max memory storage all that other type of computer shit, and like a step to step for musicians and producers because nobody actually talks about that like they talk about gear yeah. they talk about hardware but they don't talk about like the behind the scenes like everybody yeah. it's like how to edit like this person how to how to do subtitles or how to do something like that but no one talks about like behind the scenes like hardware no one talks about computers no one talks about memory storage yeah. or that it, that sort of aspect. Work. yeah it makes stuff a lot easier so that's something mm -hmm. i do want to do in the future and i'm hoping to do that in a, in a weekly upload and just talk about that with people Dope. i would love to watch that myself maybe i can get into some actual art that isn't just music then mm -hmm. that'd be great yeah man like trust me i'm not an it guy i just i just love making like making building computers like that's like before before music before becoming a producer and just learning what funk was i just consistently help people make computers outside of just music in general so, oh i think i misunderstood you then okay now i understand what you're talking about okay. i'm still gonna work 
Okay. <laughs> but yeah, like that could definitely help people out. Like uh, I talked to Rocket about it and I talked to Ness. He's another friend of mine. Hopefully I can get that sorted out with a lot of people. Just, just hoping in the future. Definitely. Okay. Being the first guest abroad, name someone who you want to see in another interview. Cause you, um, like you weren't on the list, but I know like you always support. That's why, that's why your name popped up so much for me. And that's why you're the first person to actually talk to that's abroad. So who do you want to see? <laughs> like next guest, whether it's in America or Europe. Like the first name that popped into my head was Nicky Slime. Really? That would be <laughs> very interesting. Have you talked to him before? I've, uh, <laughs> I've okay. So <laughs> I, I know he's part of Center Circle because I saw the tattoo, I think, that he got on his stomach. But I've only had one conversation with him and I was actually in the Center Circle Discord like okay. months ago. It was probably like before the actual show that they had in Hamburg. Um, but he mm -hmm. was talking about, I I wouldn't say like his recent, like a, a tape that he's working on or something like that. But like, he was just funny as shit to talk to, like talk to in the yeah. bro. bro, that guy is amazing, man. He's, he's so funny and also such a lovable guy. He's so kind. He's very understanding. Uh, he just wants everybody to have a good time. And, and also the last thing that, usually doesn't go along at least to my experience with those types of people they can actually see if you're down bad or something and like in ha in hamburg let me give you an example in hamburg i was I, I wasn't sad but i was very tired and i just felt like kind of just a little bit depressed but at the same time i knew that it isn't like the real thing because nothing bad happened you know mm -hmm. but he could see that on me and he walk over and he uh, just sit next to me and ask me, so how are you doing? Like, are you all right? Uh, it doesn't kind of look like it. Like he just said it, uh, you know, just put it out there. And uh, I just told him, no, I, everything is fine, but I am kind of ainsley a little bit now. And then we just talked about everything and nothing and it went away. So he's one of those dudes too. He's, he's a good guy, man. He's a really good guy. And he's funny as shit. From like the one conversation I had with him, bro. Like, I don't know. I don't know him on a personal level, yeah. but like, he, he seems like a pretty genuine guy. Like, mm -hmm. like I just wish I could just hang out. I, I wish I could hang out with you guys all the time. But like, I'm in America. You guys are like abroad. So hopefully that can happen in like the next year. So I can sure, actually man. hang out with really you guys. So. I, I hope so too. But the thing is, I I think Nikki is he is uh, maybe he's a bit. He's a little bit jelly or feeling some FOMO or any, something like that because he started talking about wanting to come to America this summer too. He is, uh, I think he's doing what he can to collect some cash for it, but it seems very like, it doesn't seem unlikely. It just seems kind of, it can go so much like this way, but it can also easily go this way. You know, it can happen as easily it can't happen. So I, I'm, we just have to like stay notified upon that when it comes to like his stories or whatever. But yeah, I think I think it could happen this year, maybe yeah. if he gets the bread for it. Mm -hmm. Well, if like anybody from Europe, you're always down to come over to America. We're we're working on it ourselves. Like I, I I can't speak about it publicly because it's only my public knowledge. But in the future, pro I'm hoping like the next year or two, maybe even three years, like Funk Around can actually sponsor some shows for you guys, and then uh, you guys can actually have bigger venues. Not that's not that you guys don't already have bigger venues already, but you guys can actually have more of a professional say um when it comes yeah. to like, booking places because i don't know a thing about booking shows they the the shows and the tour that they did they did that about a year in advance like to yeah. my knowledge like they they got every single person like every single venue as much to the core as they possibly could and just connecting with different talent um having a engaging lineup with every single show like it it's it's a lot it's a lot that n like i don't even know about so Hopefully in Europe, they can actually have us come over and we can kick it with y'all because I'm definitely down. I'm sure, that. I'm sure we can. And nothing much is going on in Denmark, but at least for now. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Soramain, you already know, he's got a lot going on in Hamburg uh, more specifically. So if it's uh, if it's Hamburg and Soramain is there, it's going to be Lady. 
Corey, if you're watching this, you heard what the man said. <laughs> man, yeah, he, yeah, Corey, Corey's a Corey's a godsend. He's the reason that Funk Round is a thing. Um, yeah, so Corey, we need you in the EU, man. We need you <laughs> to come to Europe and fucking make this shit happen. We need your help, bro. Bro, he behind the scenes, I don't know what to say about him, man. He's fun, and like he, I would, he's a, I like a little funny, but like in a dad type of way. Yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> From the back one's uh, vlogs, like he's sitting there all like, I don't give a shit, but at the same time, I kind of do. He's a dad. <laughs> he's such a dad, bro. Like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just so funny. Like, he acts very, very professional, but you know he's chill, or he's, he's, yeah. he's, he's serious to a T, but also like. He can have fun at the same time yeah <laughs> but uh yeah shout out to him i like i need to he probably already knows who you guys are from me like he watched i didn't even know he watched my videos i mean yeah he he's he's talked to me about the interview and everything that i did with back when vaughn and everybody else but to know that he actually knows who i am with the videos and everything is a great thing like he's he, yeah he's trying to get as dialed in as quickly as possible so that he can make more shows happen even though they're kind of dialing back this year just getting a lot more talent just to come out and hang out with us yeah okay all right so in the like in the video that you that you went that you talked about off camera basically you were actually djing in the video i don't know like what's your what's your experience level when it comes to djing because to this day or whenever i'm recording this i haven't dj'd a single set in my life like i, I always practice like i have this thing this is a d like a pioneer ddj 200 like this um okay I yeah practice like a couple of days just messing around my bad for the chair it's kind of squeaky i gotta get that shit changed but uh yeah i'm into man yeah it's just every time i freaking move like it just squeaks and you can hear it in my mic but uh going back to djing so how long have you actually uh been djing um so i've been djing since i was 18. i got uh, my first my first dj controller as an 18 year old in my for my birthday from my parents and it was the first edition of the s like the ddj sb i think it's called uh SB1? D, yeah exactly the okay. first one it doesn't even ha have trims like trim knobs yeah and it still works it still works <laughs> it's crazy i don't understand man pioneer is kind of a yeah right but <laughs> but it still works pioneers that that one it still works man it's great uh so i i got that one and just started uh messing around and having a good time and then eventually uh i uh, was hired by one of these clubs in my hometown and uh, I was DJing there for like three four years on a like a proper uh, CDJ um, with the mixer in the middle and CD one like two CDJs on each side and uh, it was with CDs uh, I think there was USB uh, input but we mainly used CDs um, that was kind of funny to do that, but uh, but then going away from that, I started. I I, I uh, quit my job and I went to live in the city that where I live now. And uh, and then from that, I just started talking to people whenever I went out. For example, going downtown to drink, I would just go up to people who I thought maybe they're a musician or they they look creative at least. Um, and this just started talking. I just uh, talked to like multiple. DJs at the at the clubs uh, talk to the bartenders if they knew somebody. Uh, just trying to spread the word and also like get some info. Like who can I talk to to actually get a job, you know, or to get a, a gig? And yeah, it, it it didn't really spread like wildfire as I hoped for because holy shit, I I spoke to I speak I spoke to so many people about this but uh, i i managed to get some gigs uh, it was mostly through uh, the music that i do with my like my very good friend uh, his name is lawitz and we have the thing called avibu together uh, forever city in english it's called um i've been um, sharing his his music and his uh, channel on my stories sometimes but uh, uh, but yeah so through that i got some gigs through that as well um so i've been basically i've been how many years is that you said Can my math 17 2018 um 
I was 18 uh, when I got it. So like if we speak professionally, at least when I got the job as a DJ, I was like 22, I think. So, uh, so yeah, that's how much is that? It's like seven, nine, nine, eight, nine years. I'm turning Jeez. 30 in April. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I'm turning. <laughs> that, no, I'm, no, I'm talking about like DJ, like DJing, like that's, that's, that's crazy. Like. I got. I haven't Shock. been doing it every. I haven't been doing it every day, and and it's been a while since I've, since I've been doing it last. Uh, like when, when you watch the video that I put out uh, from the Hempfist, you know, mm -hmm. people saw that I was standing there DJing with the zoom in and zoom out and shit. Yeah. Um, when I was doing that, uh, I was under the influence. But apart from that, I could definitely feel that it's it's been some time. Um, <laughs> And some time doing it regularly, you know, but that was okay. I just had a good time with Teddy and Jake and and Gloops, as it's called. Also DJ Source as well. Mm -hmm. Had a good time with them. That was great. But yeah, like now that I'm starting to get gigs again, especially for America and also going to the Teddy gig uh, next weekend. Yeah, a whole next week, every day, I'm going to be practicing on my beloved DDJ SB1. Amen to that, bro. What's some what what are some tips that you would give to somebody that's just getting started? Because um Enoch Enoch said there's a lot of producers, not a lot of DJs. So like what's one piece of advice that you can give somebody? Obviously, I didn't ask him how long like he told me like when he started. He was like um early teens. That's when he started basically. Um yeah. but what's what's one piece of advice that you could give somebody that's just getting started or wants to book their first show aside from like when it comes to how you should behave but like aside from like like how you would behave in a professional how you call it like way i think i would say that if you feel comfortable showing your music now to people you should spend more time on practicing uh your sets practicing the transitions uh figuring out which song goes best like in order with each other as well try to like figure out the theoretical uh, aspect of it too like a song in uh, e major would that go would a song in 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 f uh, f sharp i don't know man would it would it sound well like that song would come after the e major song so and also bpm wise what 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 makes sense but all those tips, you have to like. You have really have to remember whatever sounds good to you. It really that's what matters. Of course, take the criticism and and really like think about it and feel it, you know, and place it somewhere where it's it's healthy in your mind instead of just you know oh, I'm getting so much criticism that that must be because I fucking suck. Blah blah. No no no. It's not because you. Not because you suck. You just haven't really figured it out yet and and that's okay that's cool so take the time to to just yeah just google a bunch of shit like and and you, and then also practice google a bunch of shit and then put that into your practice mm -hmm. basically when it comes to the dj thing at least yeah man yeah. also like i want to start a series <clears throat> for people that already know how to dj i've talked to rocket about it like me and him go back and forth about this shit all the time i just want to hone into like a good six to ten people that can like come on every single like every week or like come on at least like once a month to share like one yeah. piece of advice because not a lot of, there's no there's no such thing as how to dj for funk like you have plenty of sets you have plenty of uh you have plenty of live shows you have plenty of streams but there's not a there's not a single video, to my knowledge at least, of somebody breaking down how to mix a funk beat or a funk song with another funk song. So definitely close that gap in the next year or two. That'll be cool. Definitely gonna definitely gonna hone into those ideas, bro. I got I got so much shit I want to do. Like I just don't want to get overwhelmed because I'm just excited about like yeah. the people that I want to talk to and also like the ideas that I have for videos. But yeah, this this year is going to be crazy cuz it's only been a month. It's it's the it's a, yeah. it's like the beginning of February at this point when we're doing this, but yeah. 
just January, just starting off, and then the shows in December, like just kicking it off the year to a great start. It's just, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. Yeah. I'm not, is, this is just going to be closing remarks for like the YouTube portion, and then we could just keep talking like Spotify, like off script, like off script and everything. So, um, like this, like after I cut everything, it's going to be unedited, like all that other shit for Spotify. But any plugs that you want to do, any shout outs you want to give to anybody? And then we can just wrap it up on the YouTube side. Definitely shout out Rocket Man. Uh, he's my boy. And uh, definitely shout out to Nicky Slime as well. Shout out uh, Blunted Beats slash Blunted Astronaut. Shout out Teddy Color, Grooves, Rob Jigma, No Sauce. Goddamn No Sauce. Fuck yeah, he's on his way up. God damn, mm. that's big, fat beats, man. Yeah, Jake uh jake that's one of teddy's boys man you put me on the spot now the <laughs> <middle> list. <laughs> i don't want to leave anybody out that's the thing yeah bro it's uh, difficult because there's so many names uh, different people yeah. man or remain definitely little problem god damn such a i meme, gotta right? get so much credit man sorry He's such a memester, bro. Like, <laughs> like little yeah. problem. Just fuck. <laughs> Always gonna talk shit or like give his give his honest opinion about stuff something, bro. But yeah, yeah. It's really man, the, he's bro. He's fifteen, man. He's and he's 15? like when I met him. He's I fifteen. Thought he, I thought he was sixteen. <laughs> bro, he's fifteen. I mean, wait, maybe he turned recently. I have no idea. But when what I met him, fuck, he was fifteen. Like, he was back fuck, in like man. start December. Yeah. <laughs> And when like, i saw him like, he's so tall and, and like he's, he's not he's not like fat but he's like he's a, he's a he's a big guy you know um i was like god damn how old is this motherfucker now, <laughs> isn't then, no sauce like, older than him yeah <laughs> and no sauce he was like god damn this is like the biggest 15 year old i've ever seen man holy Bro, shit. that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy Oh man! <laughs> oh good. Yeah, I think maybe that's. Uh, I think that's it. Oh yeah, I gotta. I gotta give a shout out to Mike as well, mm -hmm. Roland Jones as well. I met him uh, at in uh, in Hamburg, and I remember one of the first thing I just had to tell him is that I'm so, I'm so happy that he is one of the guys where it hasn't reached his head like at all I, I sat and i talked to him like for five to ten minutes or something and i could like from from the after those minutes i could just tell he's not an asshole he's not trying to be or show off or like hey you're not welcome in the club you know like he's, he's no he's so kind he's he's uh funny to talk to as well mad talented obviously we all know but yeah, the the guy behind Roland Jones, just everybody know, he's a good dude, man. He's a very good dude. Yo, if, Much I, love, man. if I could get him on on this, like that would be awesome. I, I, Bro, I, I, I really like. I I don't know like how his English is. Um, I don't because I haven't talked to him. I I don't know if he knows who I am. Like, but if that were to happen, I feel like that would be a big turnout. Like people would definitely <laughs> want to see what what he has or like what what he what he br not what he brings to the table because obviously we already know like what he brings to the table obviously um yeah but that's definitely a conversation i feel like people would enjoy watching 